Welcome back uh, to the course. Uh, we are in week 8, part 2. Um, so if you have any questions, uh, as always, please post it on mailing list. We'll be happy to actually uh, look at the questions, interact with you, all of that. Uh, I hope you're enjoying the class. And uh, we, I mean, feel free to actually uh, reach out to us if there's anything that we can help you with the content of the course. So one of the things that uh, I wanted to cover as part of uh, uh, this part uh, of the week eight courses, generally we are dealing with privacy, right? Uh, in, the, in the privacy, one of the things is also about uh, publicly uh, available information, personally identifiable information, what are these information, uh, what all information can you get and how does it affect, uh, how can it affect some of the user behavior, all that is what we will see right now. So one thing uh, in terms of elections is the secret ballot, right? Uh, many of us would know the secret ballot idea is that uh, nobody can force you to tell who you voted for or when you're voting, there's always this uh, provision given to you that it is protected, nobody gets to see it, all of that. Um, I'm, I'm sure some of you uh, may have voted until now uh, and some of you may have voted uh, for the first time in uh, say 20 uh, in 2019 uh, general elections uh, or probably any other elections also you may have uh, you may have uh, voted some of you may have also posted it on social media right? Uh, even if you have not posted, I'm, I'm guessing that you would have seen others do a post. If you're connected to me from 2019, you could have, uh, you would have seen that uh, I actually posted uh, on on social that I casted my vote. Why did we post on social? Right? We we share, uh, we want to share that look. I'm I'm uh, casting my vote, doing my duty as a citizen of the country, uh, all of that. And of course, uh, uh, saying that uh, I voted is also being part of the uh, activity, part of the buzz during the elections that goes on also. Right. So even if you have not voted, I'm again guessing that you would have seen others uh, um, do the post. In case if you have not seen post also, go take a look at hashtag uh, I voted. This is not just the hashtag in India. Uh, this is a hashtag across the world. So anywhere elections happens, if people post on social, uh, they would use this hashtag and do a post. So our question is that, not necessarily the elections part, right? Our interest is that, uh, can we actually study the information leak that is happening as part of this post that people do when they cast their vote? What all do you think can be inferred, right? Just just pause the video for a second and think about it, right? Uh, what all information can one uh, infer uh, from understanding that PK cast a resort? I think there may be little you can derive out of that just knowing that I casted my vote. But if you get to know the details of the parties that I voted for or the individual uh, contestants that I casted my vote for, then probably you can infer a little bit more. That's what we are going to look at. Voter privacy leaks, right? Um, so, so these are some examples of uh, tweets uh, which uh, we actually collected from uh, Twitter, so my vote uh, my vote for uh, a political party and then some at the rate, um, in this case, do you vote blah, 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 and then some uh, hashtag, similarly some at the rate and uh, saying about a, a particular party. So interestingly, uh, I mean, you, we also saw tweets like uh, hashtag I voted hashtag city name, city or constituent name, at the rate contestant name, at the rate political party name, at the rate 
प्राइम मिनिस्टर कैंडिडेट ने सो दिस इज दिस ऑल ऑफ इट केम इन वन ट्वीट वन इंस्टा पोस्ट सो इफ यू थिंक अबाउट इट राइट आई वोटेड सिटी नेम कॉन्स्टिट्यूंट हैश टैग सिटी नेम और कॉन्स्टिट्यूंट नेम दिस इज कॉन्टेस्टेंट नेम कॉन्टेस्टेंट नेम पोलिटिकल पार्टी नेम एंड प्राइम मिनिस्टर कैंडिडेट नेम इफ यू गिव अवे दीज काइंड दीज लेवल ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन आई थिंक वी कैन डिराइव अ लॉर्ड ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन अबाउट द इंडिविजुअल राइट वी डोंट नीड ऑल ऑफ इट आई गेव यू एन एग्जाम्पल वेयर मोस्ट ऑफ द इंफॉर्मेशन इज अवेलेबल फ्रॉम द टू इट इट सेल्फ बट सम ऑफ इट यू कैन डिराइव इवन इफ इट इज नॉट प्रोवाइडेड फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ आई जस्ट हैव द कॉन्टेस्टेंट नेम I can actually derive the constituent uh, uh, name. If I have the constituent name and the political party, I could actually derive the uh, contestant name. Right? You can do all of that. For example, if you just have the contestant name, and you can derive the political party and the prime minister candidate name. Right? So they're all. one to one mapping there's only like few cases where uh, one contestant was standing in multiple uh, constituency so only that this ambiguity may be needed uh, but otherwise it's actually straightforward one on one mapping uh, which would actually derive even if only half of the uh, information uh, that is uh, in the tweet that i said or in stuff post that i said if you have it right so what did we do i i think to to understand this political uh, uh, this called voter surveillance as a broader area uh, to study the voter surveillance in uh, 2019 elections uh, what all did we do we took a politician snapshot which is we had a list of uh, politicians and crafted verified right so all of it was there so we had these handles and then we took a snapshot of uh, the user so by now you would also understand how to create the snapshot because you you must have done all the hands on sessions as part of this course so you should be able to generate a snapshot like this also which is snapshot 0 uh, uh, is at the time t1 uh, let's take this is every day 2359 hours we take a snapshot what does a snapshot mean you basically go to the user uh in the list take a user find out his followers followings tweets likes shares all of that you get list of list of that particular user you go to the handle look at pk collect all this information tonight tomorrow night you come back to pk look at the uh information all that so this allows you to do a lot of interesting analysis for example if you know from t1 to t2 uh the followers from uh followers were f1 and f2 so you can actually find the difference uh in the snapshot that you took how many followers actually increased for pk not just this followers you could do actually many interesting things how the activity was how many tweets did they post because otherwise getting this uh, information is actually slightly harder uh, unless you actually do the snapshot i hope that is clear taking a snapshot helps you to find the difference between uh, difference for the user in terms of many of these features that we have been talking about the other set that we did was hashtags which is the general elections was general elections 2019 this is the official hashtag hashtag that was used for elections of course there was lots of other hashtags also uh, elections 2019 and uh, elections 19 so all of these hashtags we actually collected and of course we did some uh, sort of say smart things which is to look at tweets which has uh, these uh, hashtags first uh, then went and looked at the uh, hashtags that are in those for example let's take we got 1000 uh, tweets on day 1 <clears throat> with uh, general elections 2019 uh, we went and looked at all the hashtags that are in these 1000 tweets for example let's take if they had these two hashtags 
which is elections 2019 and elections 19, we would take that and add it back to our data collection. Now you understand all this data collection, right? Which is uh, it uh, a data collection of hashtag. You know how to do it. Uh, you can actually keep adding the hashtags uh, in the data that you're collecting. So your data pool uh, data uh, is increasing uh, and is also capturing a lot of other tweets uh, that are talking about because there could have been tweets without general elections 2019, only with elections 2019 and relevant to elections also. So we wanted to capture that. That's the setup that we had. So this allows you to do uh, understand what is happening to the politicians uh, profiles and what is happening to the hashtags content that is getting generated. Uh, if you're interested, go take a look at the data. We have actually made more than just these uh, data sets uh, public for uh, usage. Uh, so, for example, this is the total data that we shared. Then we shared Lok Sabha elections, phase one, uh, social media details, only uh, politicians and their uh, social media handles. Given that these are verified, given that these are handcrafted, uh, uh, manually annotated, they are actually very uh, true positive data, so it may be useful for some analysis. Uh, Delhi candidates election social media again. Lok Sabha elections, minister, social media, report card. So we actually created uh, a report card for every politician on uh, um, putting the features together about the politician and that information also we made public. So this is uh, during the elections, one of the, one of the things that became very popular, uh, if, if you were part of, uh, if you were following some of the discussions or some of the social media uh, things you would have seen, this, this Chokidar became very popular, right? Mabi Chokidar uh, is the campaign uh, that uh, was part of the elections 2019. So people started changing their uh, Twitter handles, adding Chokidar as part of it. These are politicians we, who made the change, but if you look at the bottom part, these are uh, non-verified users, but they, they added Chalkidar as part of the uh, Twitter handle. Just showing that they are also part of this uh, campaign, they are also part of this supporting something or not supporting something, all of that. So these kind of behaviors are very interesting uh, to study. The point I'm trying to uh, say here is that you can actually start collecting data now and seeing uh, the number of users who changed it, what kind of users changed it, all that. That's the kind of analysis that you could do also. So I, I've said this before, let me repeat it for, uh, for the benefit of understanding the content uh, here also, which is generally when we collect data from social, we get content, we get profile, we get network. Right? So here, so the earlier slide that I said, it's more of the profile data, uh, the hashtag analysis that I was saying is about the content. Uh, this slide is about the network. So if you look at the this graph, uh, this is essentially showing the connection between the uh, Twitter handles that we were analyzing, collecting data. Um, these are the handles that we were actually taking snapshots about. So uh, party uh, affiliation we know from their profile, so therefore we actually uh, color coded the handles uh, so we can actually see. This is basically interactions between the uh, political, uh, uh, political parties uh, handles and uh, not just between the parties, it's also within the parties. So if you see here, uh, INC uh, connection between INC, uh, that's how it looks like. So again, uh, we, can, we can actually look at a lot of these network uh, uh, properties also as we have seen earlier in the class. And uh, the nodes of the graph also is dependent on the number of connections it has. For example, this is pretty big versus this is very small. It just shows the number of uh, uh, incoming and outgoing edges for this is higher than this node. 
So you can also understand who's more, uh, who has more edges in this uh, graph. Right. This one is a very abstract view, dump of all the data that we had and links between them. Uh, links are basically following followers. Right. So if you keep that as an edge, edge could be, edge could have been other things also. For example, retweet, like, uh, share, all of it. Uh, verified handles. Uh, so, so give, to give you a sense of how the elections or social media uh, is playing a bigger role in elections is just these numbers. In 2014, um, interestingly, we have been analyzing elections from 2014, uh, 71 verified handles were there. In 2019, the number became 1268. I'm, I'm, I'm really thinking that in 2024, this is going to be very, very high because I think understanding understanding of social, penetration of social, uh, understanding of how to use the social for activities like election has enormously changed in the last three, four years. So this is number of handles. So, so to give you a sense, uh, x-axis is the x-axis is the political party and y-axis is the number of handles uh, that we were collecting data for. Uh, so this gives you a sense about uh, which party has more number of uh, uh, which party and uh, what what kind of handles we are talking about, right? Individuals, party handles, Raj Sabha, Lok Sabha handles, right? Uh, so BJP, INC, AAP, uh, all these all these political parties have large number of handles compared to others. It's a long tail, of course. There's lots of handles. Uh, lots of accounts have small number of uh, handles. Lots of political parties have small number of handles. Small number of political parties have large number of uh, handles, right? So this is, as we have seen before, Pareto principle, principle, or 80-20 principle, all of that. So that gives you a sense of the handles that we had. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm going through some of these things for the benefit of you understanding also uh, the kind of analysis that you could do in the data we, we can collect. And uh, until now, we have not seen this detailed uh, view of uh, the data we collect, particularly in elections where I'm going to show you also. I've already mentioned about the privacy leaks in the elections data. So this is location data. Uh, showing uh, the the posts that are coming, which are geotagged, right? Right, uh, in terms of uh, individuals posting and in terms of political party posting, right? Uh, and and geotagged uh, is uh, is very very useful, but the it, it probably is around less than one percent uh, of the social data is geotagged. Uh, so if you get the geotag data for whatever activity that you are analyzing um, more, I think it's very, very useful. You can do a lot of interesting. And the geotag is very, very accurate is because you are uh, the, the, the phone, the device that you're using is actually sharing the uh, lat long as part of the post itself. Instead of me saying, location also can come in different ways, right? One is uh, my account uh, information, which is when I created the profile, I said that I'm from Chennai. Uh, then I can actually do a, a post, or in my profile, I write saying that I'm from Triple IT Hyderabad. So I actually say hashtag Hyderabad. Then I could actually have geotag post, right? In the post, when I'm doing the post, I allow uh, the tweet to be geotagged, which is it'll take my uh, lat long, say, triple IT again, right? So this one is not really triple IT exact location. I'm just saying from I am from. The last one is the post itself. I say that weather in Delhi is so, right? So I say Delhi. So you can see that I can collect location from social in four different ways. Account, probably uh, least 
useful because you could create account from somewhere and use it from somewhere else. Profile is probably more accurate than the account because assuming that people are updating their profiles, uh, so the profile location is useful. Geotagged is very, very accurate. Uh, and then post is may or may not be also, right? Again, looking at the content, you can say that whether uh, traffic, all of this, you can say that look, probably they are talking about the location, but again, the accuracy is not very high because I could sit in Chennai and talk about weather in Delhi. So location can be got in four different ways. Uh, account creation, just to give you a sense of how the account was created, uh, because you can see this information in the uh, in the account and through APIs also you can collect. So we actually collected uh, account creation date for every single user that we were taking snapshots, and we could actually draw this graph, which is uh, around 2008 or 2009. Uh, from then uh, till 2019, the data that we were collecting we could actually see how which party had uh, how many number of users collected. We are showing you only these three because they, those three had large number of handles. <clears throat> if this is of interest to you, if you are if you're interested in knowing more about uh, the data that was collected, more of nitty gritties of details that uh, uh, we had, uh, please feel free to go take a look at this uh, paper. Uh, which talks about uh, Lok Sabha elections 2019 data and makes the data also public for you to analyze. We also did a comparison between 2014 and 2019. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be looking at opportunities to even compare it to 2024, uh, but I would highly urge you to uh, take a look at uh, all the, uh, take a look at uh, the comparison and see what all data you could also look at uh, as part of this course uh, and, and do analysis, whatever is of interest to you. I mentioned about a hashtag. Uh, so hashtag specifically also does it, does the hashtag itself say a story? Uh, for example, right, uh, hashtag um, uh, RRR Golden Globes Award. Right. Hashtag, we are with Chennai. Right. So can you actually find out these hashtags? Uh, what are the words in the hashtag? So can you break this like this uh, and make some sense out of it, right? RRR, Golden Globe Award. So it does hashtag itself say a lot of story? Uh, it, a lot of uh, information is what we were trying to study from uh, this paper. So what we did, uh, given that I said we collected all this data with hashtags and snap uh, shots that we were taking, uh, and uh, so we collected data for got inked, I voted, first vote, all of these kind of hashtags uh, we filtered because I think here we are only looking at uh, information that are getting leaked because you're actually posting about the uh, um, tweet that you voted, right? That's the, and then there was these kind of uh, uh, hashtags also that were trending, which is making our data collections more uh, easy and uh, relevant is because there was this hashtag called KB, uh, PM, Selfie, media houses were actually using these hashtags, this and many other such hashtags to get people to post about it and then use when they post, those posts will be showcased in the media house also. User handle mentions, as I said before, political party and candidate. So using a Twitter profile and selection of tweets, the way we, I just showed you in the last slide, which is I voted, got inked, all that, uh, can we successfully find PI of an individual in electoral roles? How can we detect a voter privacy leak from a tweet to inform the user and prevent it from happening in future? Those are the two questions that we were interested in at some point in time uh, to, to study as part of this voter surveillance itself. Again, this is part of a paper, so I'll, I'll let you to go take a look at the paper. But for, for us, as part of this class, what I wanted to convey was that taking the tweets, taking the Insta post with the examples that I said before, we could, we could reach, we could connect to uh, personally identifiable information, which is something like a voter ID card. Right? 
So you can actually go from a social media post uh, to a voter ID card, which is PII in that in some sense, right? Which is it'll have your uh, name, it says husband's name, house number, age, gender, and a photograph, and a voter ID number also. So from a publicly available tweet, we went to uh, also publicly available unidentified also, right? If you remember uh, the earlier part of the course, I talked about a study where unidentified and identified sources were used to figure out uh, images of people, right? Alessandro's study looking at uh, uh, can you infer personally identifiable information, which is in this case they were doing pictures from unidentified sources also. They were connecting Match.com and Facebook, right? Similarly, we were doing social media, which is Twitter or Insta, to voter ID cards. Of course, uh, we can help users not to uh, post these kind of information. So that's where we, we attempted to create a nudge, uh, which is something like this. Uh, on the left, which says that my vote uh, is for uh, uh, PM at the rate Narendra Modi, as he has a proven track record, blah, 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 blah. In, the, in that tweet, uh, we can actually say that this tweet in the current form might leak your age, gender, and address. Uh, click here to know more, or it shows in a red color, and it shows in a red color, so you can actually stop the user from doing the tweet. This can be embedded within the Twitter itself. What we did was a browser extension. Uh, but if Twitter itself uh, uh, can embed it, we can even disable this tweet. Unless something is done with this tweet, this doesn't get enabled. Right. If you look at the right hand side, uh, if if they had uh, if if this detail about the uh, prime minister uh, candidate and the uh, Twitter handle is removed, then it becomes a green. Uh, sharing that, saying that it is uh, it is okay to do such a post. At least the PI kind of information cannot be got from such a post. Right. That's what we were, uh, our attempt was uh, in creating a browser extension which can do this. Uh, that's the full paper, uh, poster for the paper, but uh, feel free to take a look at the paper and uh, see if there is anything of interest to you. Voter surveillance, so when we started this work, I, I, mean, I think we were uh, not really completely aware of this direction of voter surveillance or this theme of voter surveillance also. Uh, once we started doing uh, work on this, we realized that the voter surveillance is a big topic and a lot of work that goes on. So here is just a snapshot of different types of work that goes on in uh, voter surveillance. Now let's move on to another uh, aspect of uh, our online behavior which also has connections to privacy. Browser extension, and this is also natural connection to what I just now said, right? We, we talked about browser extensions here. Now we're going to talk about privacy around browser extension itself. I'm sure many of us use browser extension. Many of you may be using browser extensions for various things. Uh, browser extensions for uh, password, autofill, uh, browser extensions for calendar, browser extensions for some notification in the browser, uh, all of this, right? Uh, browser extensions have become part of our online behavior. So we thought we'll actually take a stab at what does this browser extension do and uh, what are the different types of questions that we can ask with the browser extension. Right. Um, so we, uh, to, to get a sense of this, I mean, I think today also you could do this. You could actually go uh, collect data from uh, Chrome extension um, all, all. So what did we do? We actually went to uh, Google Chrome extension store and collected all the extensions that are available as, uh, as part of this uh, extension store. Right? And uh, our interest was to try and see whether uh, we can get a sense of whether these uh, extensions are spying. Again, it started off with the question of, look, let's try and understand extensions, uh, whether they're doing anything. Uh, that they're not supposed to be doing. Right. 
So this was um, 218 spying extensions. So I'll tell you how did we end up getting to the spying extensions. But for now, uh, to start with, we collected uh, 43,000 Chrome extension uh, from the store, which is take all the uh, take every extension, take the uh, extension code, take the policy, whatever is available on the uh, Chrome store, we actually collected. We've actually done a lot of other interesting um, questions also with this extension even even more recently. So uh, 43,000 Chrome uh, store extensions and uh, this was installed on about 2.4 million uh, users. That's a lot of users. Some things that we did was uh, we, uh, we uh, also looked at the the users, what they were spying on, the list of what they were spying on are uh, browsing history, IP address, geolocation, uh, online social media access tokens, and domains visited. Let me tell you what did we do, right? Uh, we actually set up a, a sandbox environment where these uh, extensions could uh, be deployed, and the extensions would behave as to they are behaving in a normal Chrome uh, browser of yours and mine, right? That's what we did. And uh, the browser will uh, emulate activities like going to a particular website, doing some activity, and through the process we learned how, uh, what information was this Chrome extension looking at, uh, what was it doing, what is it sending, what is it receiving, where is it sending, all of this we were trying to study. Uh, browsing history domain, uh, so so uh, leakage of behavioral pattern uh, li links to private documents on services like uh, Pastebin, Google Docs, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so this is basically keeping a tab on uh, your browsing history. So these 218 uh, extensions that we found of the 40,000 40, plus extensions, these number 218 uh, extensions did the spying. Spying definition here, the, the definition that we had put down was, look, it is doing something that it is not supposed to be doing, which is in the policy, it says that uh, it's a calendar uh, extension. It is supposed to help you set up your calendar uh, event, all that, but it's also taking access to your uh, uh, location. That's where uh, we were trying to study. And it's also capturing a browsing history and geolocation, IP address, all of that. Uh, and, and some of them were also looking at uh, the, you have multiple tabs, I think we, we do uh, have this behavior. Most of us have this behavior of having multiple tabs open and one of it may be your, uh, the tab that has the extension and the other one which is, uh, could be the social media account that you have kept it open and the spying uh, extension can actually get access to the uh, access tokens, right? This is what I was mentioning. Tabs, cookies, storage, uh, uh, URLs that you went to, history, geolocation, active tabs that you're using, uh, storing user information, cookies, unlimited storage, uh, sending user information to web request. All of this was actually happening in the spying extension. Here's another uh, graph that uh, uh, may be of interest, which is on the x-axis, we have ratings of the uh, app extension, and the y-axis is fraction of uh, extension. By now, you should be able to read these graphs uh, well. We have seen a lot of these uh, CDF graph, uh, PDF graphs, uh, these graphs in many other uh, parts of the course. So on the x-axis is the ratings of the extension, y-axis is the fraction. So essentially what this means is uh, uh, extension extensions which had four or lesser rating were about 25%, which was all uh, extensions. Whereas if you look at the spying extensions, it's about 45 uh, percent, 45 percent of the uh, total extensions that we were analyzing had ratings uh, which was uh, four or lesser, which was also spying. The, 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 the interesting thing is that uh, if you see the spying extensions are getting rated more than the all extensions. 
same thing at different points if you see um, the spying extensions are getting uh, getting uh, rated more so we were just curious about some of these things uh, we also saw that 12 out of the uh, 218 extensions received negative comments uh, I mean this could be more right the idea is that uh, uh, look why only 12 all the 218 should be getting negative uh, comments we also saw top developers also published buying extensions two out of the top 10 developers of the total uh, apps that were built on uh, Chrome uh, were part of these spying extensions also. Of course, uh, you can, today we can do a lot of uh, uh, modeling, a lot of uh, machine learning approaches to actually study this even better, look at different features, all of that. So if you're interested again for this, so so the, the idea here is that an, as an extension which is uh, something you probably downloaded uh, to to get some productivity job done uh, to make sure that you are uh, every half an hour your your browser says that uh, see away from the browser for for 30 seconds all of these are extensions that uh, you could actually use and uh, we were interested in studying whether these are actually uh, spying on us uh, that's all I had for uh, this part of the uh, week. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask uh, in the mailing list. Again, the idea is to give you a sense of uh, personally identifiable information. We will continue with the topic of privacy in this week.